I've been using the new Surface Laptop 7 now for just over a week, and I thought this would be a great time to give you a review of using this for a week as my daily driver. And I've been really pleasantly surprised with how this device has performed. In terms of specs, this is the base model Surface Laptop 7. It has the Snapdragon X Plus processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD. I have upgraded it from Windows 7 Home to Windows 7 Pro, but other than that, the device is basically as it comes out of the box. In terms of design, the Surface Laptop 7 is definitely a premium device by Microsoft, and this is the first time in seven generations they've really updated the design of the Surface Laptop. This is the 13.8 inch model, and there is of course a 15 inch model as well. One thing you'll notice here is that the screen size has gone up from 13.5 to 13.8 inches, and you can definitely tell it has a lot thinner bezels around the side, which just make it feel like a much more sleek modern device. Um, and of course, around the edges of the bezel, they are now rounded corners, which just adds even more of a modern feel. In terms of the keyboard and the trackpad, the biggest difference most people may or may not notice is of course the addition of the Copilot key to quickly access Microsoft Copilot on this device. In terms of ports, it does have two USB-C and a USB-A port on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you do have the Magnetic Surface Connect charger. The keyboard and the trackpad have been upgraded as well. The keyboard does feel really nice. And the biggest addition or change here is of course the addition of that Copilot key. Microsoft has always given you a choice of really nice colors with the Surface Laptop range. This is the standard platinum, but you could also get it in black. And there are two unique colors, June, which is a really nice sandstone color, and sapphire, which is a very nice blue. Thinking about it, maybe I should have gone for this sapphire because it does look great, uh, but platinum or silver is really just a standard choice. Either way, no matter which one you get, the device and this laptop just looks awesome. So as I mentioned, I've been running this device as my daily driver for just over a week now, and I've tried to run it on battery every single day to get a true representation of that all day battery life. And I can pleasantly say that this device has ended every single day with 20, 30, or 40%, depending on the workload I threw at it. And that was running it on battery for essentially a full day of work. I didn't look and run down this from 100 to 0% because for me, those tests don't really give you real world usage, but actually running it for a daily driver every single day for a week allowed me to test that battery life in real world scenarios. Using it every day and finishing every day with a decent amount of battery life for me shows that even though it may not hit that 20 hours of claimed battery life, it definitely gets you through a full day of working and you don't have to worry about charging all the time. The flip side of having great battery life is often having a lower performing device because you can't often have great performance and great battery life but the Snapdragon X Plus and Alexa Elite processors promise to do just that. As I mentioned, this is the base model, the X Plus processor with 16 gigs of RAM, and I threw everything I could at it, all my workloads, my video editing, everything like that, I would run on this device on battery, I'll also add, just to really push it to its limits. Two things I wanna call out here is first, the application gap. So I couldn't tell whether apps were being emulated or whether they were running natively on Windows 11. And I believe this is a really big win for Microsoft and Windows 11 in that most users out there don't really care whether their app is being emulated or running natively as long as it just works and it works flawlessly. I didn't run into any issues running any application on this device. And for me, that is a huge win. And then of course, I'm not sure if you picked up, but I did also mention video editing. I was so excited when they announced these new Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus processors could run video editing programs like DaVinci Resolve, and I definitely tried it out on this computer here. And I was so happy when DaVinci Resolve booted up and launched into it, and it just ran, and it ran really well, all on battery life. All on battery power, sorry. I will mention though, I did launch Task Manager and the CPU wasn't using all that much energy. The NPU or that neural processing unit, the AI chip was also working quite well as well as the GPU. One area I did sort of bottleneck this device though is of course the RAM when I was doing video editing. So if you are looking at getting a Snapdragon X Plus or X Elite device for video editing, I would recommend if you have the money, jump up to 32 or 64 gigs of RAM just because you're probably investing in this device for a number of years. And right now, yes, it works and it works really well, again, on battery life. But if you do have the money and you wanna just make sure you have a flawless experience for the next three, four, five years, I'd recommend getting that 32 or even that 64 gigs of RAM. Just make sure that your RAM doesn't bottleneck you later on. 
Um, but the call out here is that performance on this thing, I was so impressed with how well it ran everything, how speedy it was, how snappy it was. The fact that I could do everything on battery life and then there was no sound from it. The fans didn't kick off, it stayed cool, it stayed quiet and it just sipped at that battery life. So if I was going to sum up the overall performance of this device, they've hit it on raw performance power, battery life, quietness, and of course how cool it stays as well. Uh, so I'm really impressed and this is the base model. So if you get that X Elite device, you have an even better experience of Windows 11. I do wanna to touch on, of course, the Copilot key that is on this device, where if you tap it, it will quickly launch you into Copilot where you can start asking a question. It is really nice to have a quick button to launch into Copilot and have an AI assistant at your fingertips, but I do wanna see more out of Copilot in the future and I do believe more will come from it. At the time of recording this, they have removed some of the features like asking it to turn on or off dark mode. And I thought that was a really nice feature where Copilot could affect some of your system settings because it just made it a lot easier for a lot of people that don't know how to do those sorts of features. Um, I do believe the Copilot key will get better over time. For now, it really is just a quick launch into the Copilot app. Now let's dig into the AI features on this device. If you don't know, this is actually branded a Copilot Plus PC. And what that means is that this computer has a chip inside of it called a neural processing unit that is capable of over 40 trillion operations per second or 40 tops. Those tops and those that AI chip is designed to take away a lot of the strain that goes on the CPU and the RAM and put AI workloads on that dedicated chip to give you better performance as well as better battery life. Two great examples of this are actually using video effects on a video call as well as microphone voice isolation. And I can tell you this works so, so well. The AI effects on here are much better. The camera is a lot clearer and there is very little drain on the CPU. And you can see this in the task manager where it is actually the AI processor, the NPU, that is spiking up every time you turn on the effects. In terms of video calls, people have said it is a great webcam experience and just the calls and the quality of it are really up there. And that is thanks to that NPU or that neural processing unit. Because these devices are relatively new to the market, I believe there's still a lot of untapped potential that third-party developers can use this AI chip for. What we're looking at now is part of the Snapdragon release, where you can see here that in DaVinci Resolve, a video editing program, there is a massive difference when they have a device running that AI chip to when they don't. And what I reckon is in the next year, we're gonna see a lot more developers learning how to add these AI tools into their products and really enhancing what you can do on these Copilot Plus PCs. Right now, I am very impressed with what it can do with video and audio, and I really can't wait to see what other developers can do when they start utilizing that chip in their programs. All right, so final thoughts of using this device for the, the past week as my daily driver. I've been so impressed with the Surface Laptop 7 with the Snapdragon X Plus processor. This device has been awesome in terms of battery life power performance and just an overall Windows device because everything on here is run super, super smoothly. That AI processing unit has been great for video calls and voice isolation, even using it right now as I record this video. The device, awesome. It just looks like a premium Windows device. I love how they've shrunk the bezels out of those rounded corners and improved the keyboard experience and really made a better improvement on the trackpad to make it more accessible for everybody. I do like the fact that it has two USB as well as a USB A port on it. And then it still kept the magnetic surface connect because that is for me the safest way to charge any device is using a magnetic connector. Would I recommend the Surface Laptop 7? I definitely would if you're after a great Windows device uh, in a clamshell form factor, this is definitely one to consider. Like I said, I'm using the base model and this has worked so well for me. Of course, if you are gonna throw heavier workloads at it, I would recommend bumping up that RAM if you have the money, just because you don't wanna have a bottleneck later on because you're probably planning on keeping the device for a couple of years. Let me know what you guys think about this device in the comment section down below. If there's any apps you want me to test on it, let me know and I'll try and put a video out on that. Of course, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. In the wild, where the trees sway, there's a fox bragging gate.